the BSC Expo here and I'm joined by Nick Driftwood who's been using the GH5 a lot and Lewis from Atmos. We are honoured to talk to both of you because you probably know more than anybody else on the planet right now about how this setup actually works and what you get especially in off, off speed, high speed um, shooting. So uh, Nick, I'll start with you. What does the camera do internally shooting wise? Okay, well it does obviously have everything up from 24p up to 60p now, 50p, 60p internal. But it'll in only 4K. do, yeah, in 4K. But it'll only do 4208 bit at uh, 50p and 60p. Everything else is can go up to 10 bit or 8 bit. You can se select it. Uh, externally, then we can record in an all intra codec ProRes 50p, 60p externally through the HDMI. And Lewis. Um you know, we've talked about this before. Does this now actually work? Can you record 4K, 50, and 60 with yeah. this? Yeah, so we're coming out uh, over the full-size uh, HDMI, which is a real godsend that they're using that, rather than the micro, because uh, you know the, the connection is much better. So we can get 4K, 60p, 422 out to uh, the Inferno. And you know, this camera doesn't have uh, V-Log installed on this particular one we're shooting with, but that is an option. And then what they're bringing out as well is hybrid log gamma. So in the summer, that'll be an update. So the Inferno is able to show the uh, high dynamic range processing of both V-Log and uh, the hybrid log gamma for this camera. Now, one question that's come up a lot online is in HD, uh, can you shoot, or what frame rates can you shoot? Again, internally and then externally and what happens when you shoot in a high frame rate internally and you're trying to monitor it out so um, Nick okay well as you know there's a, a variable frame rate uh, which is like the GH4 we went up to 100 uh, sorry 96 frames per second now the GH5 can go up to 180 from two frames per second all the way up to 180 internally. and that's internally um, in HD only FHD uh, and 60p in 4k uh, from 2 to 60 so two variables there um, you can externally record 60p, 50p um, at HD whilst you're recording internally 180 frames per second. Okay. Um, practically, how have you found shooting? How have you found shooting high frame rate with this camera? Uh, really lovely, actually. Um, the vertical resolution is much better than the GH4. In fact, considerably so. And you can actually upscale it to 4K, and a lot of people wouldn't tell the difference. A little bit of sharpening maybe on there, but not as much as before. So it's really usable, and I think people are really going to love it. Yeah. And uh, the the external 4K 60. Have you played with that much? 4K 60p externally via the the new Atomos Shogun Inferno works beautifully well. You know, I can record in 422 10-bit and in an all intra codec, which I much prefer to to, to work in because um, all that transcoding etc from H.264 it's just a better codec all around I really wish it was on, on camera it's not so this is why you know Panasonic work with Atomos people they recognize that and also the size of the monitor for you know like vlog assist and um, all those waveforms and scopes etc which we like to see really large and big it just helps with our focusing so for me you know the Atomos is always you know an essential part of my kit so I mean I'll put you on the spot a little bit in quality terms, yeah. where do you now rate this combination relative to some of the more common things out there? Do you go for this over, I don't know, a very Cam LT, I'd let's say, let's I'd stay I'd within I'd the Panasonic yeah, line? I'm it, yes, I would, especially what's coming in I'd summer. Pair, I'd pair it alongside an LT. You know, in terms of the capability of that whole Vericam range, you've got 35, LT, and, you know, we can provide that universal ProRes recording. So the ProRes recording in a, in a 35 is done by Atomos. On LT, we have raw to ProRes recording, and same on here. So if I was having a production where I wanted to unify my cameras and have all different ranges and sizes, this provides a really nice option for that. And just back on Micro Four Thirds, the shallow flangeback nature of it allows you to adapt it to anything, you know, PL, and, you know, if, if we look at what's going on. PL on here, here right now. Yeah, turn it is, you know, we've got a Schneider uh, PL going on Actually, on here. It's a Solaire. It's, it's, it's a Solaire. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Solaire. Sorry, Mr. Solaire. <laughs> I, I didn't check that out before, but yeah. Well, what you're proving it, is it's cinematic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you've got this full cinematic lens on here and a capable sensor and that recording. You know, if when you look at the, the, the light pipeline from the light to pixels back to light again here, we're working in the same manner as we would at a much higher end camera and the same way that you would have done, you know, you're getting close to those filmic production values for 
consumer level money. That's just like three thousand pounds. It's insane. Three and a half thousand pounds. Yeah, imagine okay. this only a few years ago. It's insane. Yeah, well, I can imagine it now. I'm looking at it thinking I quite fancy one of those. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for your time.